exercise 8.5, variable costing unit product cost and income statement break even. There's a lot there, isn't there? Waterloo Storage Products makes a four drawer plastic storage cabinet on casters meant for use in garages and workshops. Each cabinet sells for $35. Data for the last year's operations follow. And we're given this information here, units in beginning inventory zero. Units produced 25,000, units sold 21,500. So we're building inventory, 3,500 units. We have our cost breakdown, variable cost per unit, materials 8, labor 10, overhead 2, and selling and administrative 4. And we have our fixed cost, total fixed manufacturing overhead of 75 and fixed SNA of 110. So what is required? Number one, assume that the company uses variable costing. Compute the unit product cost for one storage cabinet. Well, you'll recall that when we're doing variable costing, all we're concerned about is the manufacturing variable costs. So even though we have a whole bunch of variable costs here, variable selling and administrative is not included, and fixed manufacturing is not included. All we're concerned about are the variable costs. So the first uh, direct materials, we will add that. The next one is direct labor. We will identify that. And finally, we have variable manufacturing overhead. That is included as well. And that will be it. So for number one, there is our total cost per unit under variable costing is $20 per unit. Nice and simple. Number two, assume that the company uses variable costing. Prepare a contribution format income statement for the year. So for that, we're going to switch to a different screen. So continuing on, 8.5, just to recap, learning objective one, learning objective two. And we were asked to do a contribution format income statement given the information that we had. So let us begin with sales. And you'll recall that each unit was $35 per unit and we made 25,000 but we only sold 21,500 of them. So that gives us total sales of $752,000. Sorry, 752.5. Then since this is a contribution format income statement, next is less our variable cost. So all the variable costs that we subtract. Variable cost of production, well, we have to figure it out. We start with beginning inventory, and we were told that we had nothing in beginning inventory. We added our production costs, everything that we produced. We produced 25,000 units. Our variable cost per unit was $20, so we have $500,000 of production. However, we didn't sell them all. We have some ending inventory. We have 3,500 units in ending inventory. And those 3,500 units are in ending inventory at $20 per unit. So that's $70,000 in uh, ending inventory. Bring that across. We have 430,000 in variable production costs. Then we have our variable selling and administrative expense. Because remember, contribution format, all our variable costs go first. Costs are categorized by behavior, not function. And what do we put in here for our variable selling and administrative costs? Well, our variable selling and administrative costs were $4 per unit. That's given in the question. Times only what we sold, 21.5. If we didn't sell it, we, we couldn't possibly have a selling costs for something we didn't sell, right? So 4 times 21.5 will give us 86,000. 752.5 minus these two numbers gives us 236,500. That is our contribution margin. Contribution margin. Let's move on to the fixed costs. Less fixed costs. And we have two fixed costs. We have fixed manufacturing overhead, which we're told is 75,000. And we have fixed selling and administrative, which we're told is 110,000. So that extends out to 185,000. And do some simple subtraction. 
we have an operating income of 51,500 using variable costing. So there we go, there's number two done. Number three asks us to compute what is the company's break-even point in terms of units sold. So we have to remember that our break-even point in units is our fixed costs divided by our contribution margin per unit. Units and units, that's how we remember that. Equals, well, our fixed costs are here. 75,000 and 110,000, we have $185,000. Contribution margin per unit, well, we have to do a little bit of thinking about this, right? If we sold 21,500 units, our contribution margin, our total contribution margin, being 236.5, to get the contribution margin per unit, we have to divide this by how many we sold, 21,500. If you do that, 236.5 divided by 21.5, you will get $11. <clears throat> so our contribution margin is $11. Now let's see if that makes sense. Keep in mind that our selling price was $35. We had calculated our variable production costs at $20, and our variable selling and administrative at four dollars. So 35 minus 20 minus four equals 11. So we have two ways to check. We can do we can do it directly by dividing the total contribution margin by the number of units sold, or we can just recall that our selling price was 35, our variable cost of production were 20, and our variable selling expense was four. 35 minus 20 minus four is 11. So that's a nice easy way to check if we're, if we're on the right track. It works out to 11 both ways. So we'll divide this by 11 and we get 16,818.18. Now, here's a general rule. Whenever you have point something, always go up to the next number. Always add one, always go up. Even if it's point zero zero one. <clears throat> the reason is, is we're looking for our break even in units. If we dropped this fraction of a unit and did 16818 we would be something less than 185 about the same but still something less do you get that it would be something less so if we go up by one we're certain to be over so you never just round to the nearest number when we're calculating our break even in units always round up so our break even point is 16819 that's what we would set production for if we were looking for a break even point we would add we would move it up by one unit. That is 8.5. Exercise 8.6 looks like a short one, but uh, it uses the previous data, which is why we're looking at uh, the solution to 8.5 on the screen. So let's see what we have here. Absorption costing unit product cost, income statement. Refer to the data in exercise 8.5 for Waterloo storage products. Assume in this exercise that the company uses absorption costing. Now in 8.5, we assumed variable costing. Here we're going to assume absorption costing. Required number one, compute the unit product cost for one storage cabinet. So we're still going to have here, we're still going to have our direct materials. We're going to have our direct labor cost. We're also going to have our variable manufacturing costs. But we also have to include our fixed manufacturing overhead. Now, this is a total number, and we need a per unit number. So we take our total, 75,000, and we divide it by the number of units produced. Not the number of units sold, because some of it was unsold. Some of it went into inventory. The stuff that's going in inventory has to have some of this overhead cost associated with it. So when we're figuring out our manufacturing over uh, overhead per unit, it's always with the units produced. Notice that it is $23 per unit and not $20 per unit. So it is a higher cost per unit. Number two, prepare an income statement for the year. Not a contribution format, but an income statement. So let's do that. So 8.6 is covering off learning objective one, learning objective two. We've already done part one of, of this question. We're now on part two, which is to do an income statement. 
Well, our sales number is going to be the same number because we're still selling 21,500 units at 35 bucks. So that gives us $752,500. From that, we will subtract our cost of goods sold because this is an income statement, right? We're subtracting by function now, not by behavior. So cost of goods sold, how do we calculate that? Well, our beginning inventory was zero. We add our production. Now our production is not, uh, we call, was 500,000 under variable costing because we were using the $20 unit cost. But now we're at $23 unit cost. We still made 25,000 units, so now we have 575,000. Less our ending inventory, and our ending inventory was 3,500 units but we're also multiplying that by 23 and not 20. So our ending inventory is 80,500. So extending that across, we have 494,500. Subtracting the two gives us $258,000. This is our gross margin. From that, we subtract our selling and administrative expenses. And our selling and administrative expenses are, keep in mind now, you got to be careful. The question says that our fixed portion was 110. But there's also a variable portion to selling and administrative. It's $4 per unit sold. $4 per unit sold. So you have to add 86000 to that. So our fixed costs, or sorry, our selling and administrative are 196000 which gives us an income of $62,000, or sorry, not an income, an operating income of $62,000. So does that make any sense? Well, let's think about what our ending inventory is. 3,500 units. Well, how much fixed manufacturing overhead is in that? We calculated that there was $3 per unit in fixed manufacturing overhead. If there are 3,500 units, we are storing $10,500 of costs in inventory. So when costs are, are, are stored in inventory, we say they are deferred. Fixed manufacturing overhead deferred in inventory is 10,5. So if our variable costing operating income, which we calculated, was 51,500, we have to add to that any deferred amount. And what did we defer? 10,500. So if we add this together, we get $62,000, which is what the absorption costing results should be. And it is exactly 62. So we have a nice little way to audit our result to see when we get 62 in the end, can we verify that that is in fact right? Now, if we go through this process, and we don't get 62, we've made a mistake somewhere. Chances are, if you're doing this question and you find that you're not getting the right answer, you're probably confusing in the selling and administrative expense. You're probably just putting in the fixed amount and not paying attention to the fact that, hang on a second, there was a variable amount in there as well. A contribution format income statement, if you're doing contribution format, classifies costs by behavior variable and fixed. This is an income statement. Classifies costs by function. Don't get confused between the two. That is 8.6.